every time I drink my water, I am saying thank you, I love you, I appreciate you, thank you for healing my body. And it's just this act of gratitude. If yeah. I'm washing my hands, I'm doing the same thing. The human body is 70 to 80% water. Right. So the energy that you get from doing this simple exercise, blessing your water, is super profound. It's a dope hat, bro. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. Do you see the third eye? Where is it? Guys, look at that. That's awesome. That's so cool. Hampoo hats. I love that, man. This is my manifestation hat. There we go. Yeah. We're, the video's on manifestation beast. Here we go. Welcome back to another video. My name's Aaron, and I help people expand their consciousness. I'm here with my brother, yeah. Drew Cannoli. Here we go. And uh, he is really, he's, he's an amazing human being altogether. However, as well, one thing that I've learned from him mm. is uh, he's, a, he's a YouTuber. I'm gonna go ahead and link his channel below as well. He makes amazing content on raising your vibration and a lot of it through diet. People have been asking me for so long to, uh, to understand more about vibration and diet and he's yeah. the guy to go check out for sure. Yes. And um, recently I came over here to San Diego, uh, which is where Drew lives, and I've come to understand that he honestly is the most abundant person I've ever met. And I mean that from a, a level mm. of vibrational abundance. Thank you, brother. And uh, the way you are, just the, the, the your lifestyle, the way that you show up in the world, how you treat people, he truly is a very special person. So I wanna introduce you first off to Drew Canoli. Thank you, my man. Yeah, Quite the course. introduction. Yeah. yeah. And I love, uh, I follow Aaron on YouTube and I've been watching his growth over time and it's absolutely incredible. Thank you. Uh, that you're in this community with him. That yeah, thank you. You are investing in your life, that you are realizing the truth of being and this guy is living proof of that. Thank you. And uh, the Hogwarts, <laughs> I got my Harry Potter glasses on as well. Just so in, exactly. We got a lot of magic going on here. We do, for yeah. sure. So what we wanted to share with you today is uh, yes. ways of becoming a manifestation beast. Yes. Drew is definitely a manifestation beast. I'm a manifestation beast in training. <laughs> but what we thought yes. we would do is talk about it because we were talking earlier and yes. it's the, the key to this process is really raising our vibration. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're both young Padawans in this, mm -hmm. you know, becoming Jedis. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. raising the vibration is something that we have to take real serious and yeah. not serious at all, right? It's one of those catch-22s. Yeah. So every single day you're putting in the work. Like into, if you were on a diet, if you were looking to create wealth or abundance yep. in your life, we need to invest in our vibration, in our reality yeah. that's uh, the multi-dimensional self. Yep. And, uh, it works really, really well when you do certain things. So we right. want to talk about the certain things today. Yes, right, that we can do. And what one of the things that I I found I've known Drew or known of Drew for about three or four years now since I've been on YouTube. Because actually yeah. back in the day I told him this. People used to tell me you yeah. look like uh, you look like Drew Cannoli, and I was like, huh? And I went and looked, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I could kind of see the correlation yeah. back when our beards were similar and yeah. stuff. But recently I heard uh, I heard you on a, on a podcast on yes. Paul Check's podcast, and he was talking a lot about his story. And as abundant as Drew is, he had, I really resonated with his story of how he grew up because um, yeah. he went through kind of a similar type of uh, trauma growing up. And he's someone that really shows that you can overcome trauma and it's one of the necessary parts of raising your vibration. So what I thought we could start off with is maybe talking or maybe yeah. some people in the crowd that feels like they have some trauma that's kind of buried in or some yeah. negative things that happened in the past and you can overcome those. I'm an example of that. Drew is yes. an example of Definitely that. Definitely so an example. Could you share a little bit about what happened growing up? And Absolutely. So you as you guys probably know this, I like to say I chose my uh, beginnings in this life. I incarnated into a form that chose a lot of trauma. You know, my dad was very physically abusive. He tortured me. He yeah. would, uh, and I'm not saying these things to get an emotional response, guys. I'm using them as a story here yeah. and a lesson yep. that you can apply to your life to change your life. So uh, basically, I was tortured. Couldn't tie my shoes fast enough. My biological dad would put cigarettes out on my forehead. He would hold my head underneath the water in, in a bathtub wow. when I was like just a little guy, three, four years old. Nobody deserves to go through that. Right. But I chose it for the experience that it would give me later on. And that trauma is fuel in my life that I use every single day. And it's not, it's not that it's gone away. It's not that I've completely eradicated it from my life at all. I believe it stores itself in your body, your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And I have access to it at will and it actually makes me much more of an empath and have much more compassion for people that are going through things that are similar or related to 
uh, yeah. self-worth, related to issues of self-esteem, related to issues of abundance and subconscious as uh -huh. we move and ascend up the spiral dynamics. Right? Yes, yes. So, so what was, uh, you were telling me a little bit about a process that you use to release that, what would you say is, a, is something yeah. that was powerful for you to so, release that trauma? So I did, e at the age of six, I did EMDR for a couple years. And what is EMDR? EMDR is more of a mind thing, removing it from your mind. Is our tripod kind of slipping a little bit here? Let's try to Maybe. fix this real quick. Yeah. Um, so EMDR was great. It's the eye movement, it's the tracking stuff that you can do yes. to disassociate certain thoughts and memories in your brain. So if you have an EMDR, EMDR specialist around you, definitely check it out. Okay. One thing that I've been doing lately, which I believe is actually superior in my life, that I try to do every single day, right, is what's called TRE, and that's trauma release exercises. Okay. You can do it on your own by doing a wall sit for like one minute, and then you hold your legs in a butterfly position, and your your legs start to tremor like my hands are right now. Okay. And what they discovered in this is that kids in India, when bombs were going off and whatnot, they'd run back to their parents and they'd sit in the laps of their parents and their legs would start to shake. Uh huh. And they were shaking out the trauma that had just happened. Wow. And if a gazelle gets attacked in the jungle, um, and it's the cheetah drags it back to her cubs to feed on this gazelle and it has a chance to get up and get away. What it does is it runs back to the herd mm -hmm. and then it dances, it shakes it out vigorously. It's moving around, it's jumping yeah. around and the herd's doing it with it because it's shaking out the trauma that was actually caused by the cheetah. Wow. So TRE is a, a tool that we can use as human beings to shake the trauma and get rid of it in our body. And energy healers that have seen like your yeah. field before and after you do TRE, it's amazing how much it can align you wow. and clean up your vibrational state. It's called TRE. So you do, so it's uh, to do that, it's, uh, it's yeah. something that you, you stand against the wall in like a plank position. Yep. A, I posted a video on my YouTube channel. Okay, maybe it, we'll so link that link below. That. We'll link yeah. that below so you guys can see And I'll show you how to do that. it later today too. Okay, that's cool. This guy's speaking at the Organifi office later today. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah, he owns a company called Organifi. Maybe yeah. you've probably heard of it, maybe heard of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to his, uh, kill his it. office. We're gonna be talking, I'm with Victor Odo as yeah. well. So. Beliefs, baby. Yeah. Here we go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So, um, okay, so one of the necessary steps with yeah. becoming a manifestation beast is first off clearing the trauma of your past yeah. and energetically releasing it. And something yeah. that helped me too was observing, learning just how to observe yes. my thoughts. To observe my thoughts and to observe the past and to understand the meaning I was giving the past. Yeah. When I look at my past and all the pain that came out of it, the moment I changed the meaning of it and yeah. realized that my painful ex-stepmom, you know, being in the around my ex-stepmom, that pain led me to a spiritual awakening. It, yeah. The meaning changed, and then I had all this new energy. And think about a manifestation beast as somebody with like a lot of X surplus energy was kind of what I was yeah. talking about at Granify yes. yesterday. So you want energy, and in order to have energy, you have to release the energy that's keeping your energy stuck. In, stuck. Yeah. And then from there, you have energy to be able to give, Yeah. right? So what would you say as well is, I've seen your lifestyle, yes. I've seen some of the cool stuff you do around the house, which one day we'll do a video on that as well. Yes. He's got some of the coolest. This guy's coming back. Coming back for sure. Loving Cali. Yes, I love Cali now. I definitely want to live here one day. <laughs> um, but uh, what would you say is some of their manifestation tips you have yes. towards keeping your vibe high? Yeah. And also just in general, what are some things uh, you were telling me kind of what you do before you go to bed and- Yep, cool. So vibe high tips and what I do before bed, I'll tell you that. Okay. And to kind of recap on what you said about the beliefs. Yeah. So now when I think about my pops, because it's the meaning yep. that we create, I, at first, I was, I forgave him when I was young, so five and six, so forgive whoever wronged you. Yep, that's, and yeah, then for sure. And then the second to that is, I didn't see him separate from me. So I actually thanked him for bringing me in this life experience and giving yep. my mother what she needed to create this biological meat suit that we call Drew Cannoli in the personal realm. Yeah. And uh, thanking him for that was a big aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then realizing through the law of oneness, which you've talked about in the past, yeah. that it wasn't my father that did it to me, that it was actually me incarnated in a different form to show me lessons yep. that I needed to learn. Yep. And there's no separation between me and the biological father and my real yeah. father, which, you know, we can go down a tangent with that. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, universe, source, whatever you guys want to call it. Yep. Uh, that really changed and cleared. So it's, so it's the just, oneness thing. Just to kind of clarify what he's saying yeah. as well, in case people are wondering, the idea is the lessons that we agree to in our life, yeah. 
the other people that do the hard things to us and the harsh things to us are other versions of us when yeah. we realize that we're all connected. Yeah. So when Mirrors. we learn how to thank that person, like I can thank my ex stepmom in a weird way because it led me to my spiritual awakening yes. and to being able to help thousands or hundreds of thousands of people go through a similar type of transformation. Yeah. So that is, uh, I'm Massive. glad that I'm glad that you you mentioned yeah. that. You know, something else him and I talked about recently is uh, I was telling him that Neville Goddard. Yeah, Neville Goddard's my is boy. like yeah. He was he was mentioning Neville Goddard. Yeah. I was like yeah, he's like blowing up like uh you know he was around in yeah. like the 1900s. Yes. And uh, you know he's been gone for a while, but his information on YouTube, so many people are talking about it, and it's something that I the talk. The room of wishful thinking. I like right? that. Yeah, I've never. Uh, the yeah. room of wishful thinking is an imagination type exercise yes. for manifesting. You can go there. You can clear with other people in your life. You can visualize it's in visualization ideas patents. Uh, things that you want to invent, whatever it is, you can go to the room of wishful thinking any time throughout the day. So Neville Goddard's definitely been instrumental in my yes. life. Can Joel you talk Goldstein as well, and uh, Stuart Wilde is a big. I know one. Stuart Wilde. I got to check out Goldstein. Yeah. Um, what? Okay, so talk a little bit about how you go about manifesting your next day and yes. what you do. Because just so you, if you guys don't know, Drew is an incredibly abundant guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, after you leave, I'll show, I'll do a little at the end of this, I'll show some of the stuff that he has in his house yeah, just so yeah, you yeah. kind of see some of the cool lifestyle he lives. But what are some of the things you do as you're going to bed at night? Yeah. I know you were talking a little bit about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So for me, everything is uh, speaking to my subconscious as mm -hmm. if it's separate from my personal mind, right? So it's my, uh, second awareness or my second attention as mm. my Don would say and uh, when we use our second attention to observe we can we can become a lot more powerful right so second attention what is that again so that it's is... removing the awareness from the you that is doing the doing in the human experience I see so it's really observing the being, it it's the sentient being it's the yes. higher self being it's the being that's plugged into all things yeah and uh, what I do is I tell my subconscious simply what I want to create in dream time Right? So what do I want to dream about? Where do I want to go? What do I want to learn? What idea do I need? Right. Who do I want to uh, impact? Who needs help healing? Yeah. And uh, that's what I do before I go to bed. My subconscious without fail gives me whatever I need. Yeah. As long as I wake up and I look for it again. So I'm waking up intentional as well. Yes. What was the lesson that I learned? What was the dream sequence? I'm looking for context, yep. not content. Because the content of the dream can be just a subconscious arbitrage of different yeah. thoughts and muddlings throughout the day. But right. when you start looking at the context of it, it could be a greater meme or a purpose mm -hmm. for what's happening actually in the residual reality that you're creating in real time right now. Right. So the subconscious is giving you very valuable information, but most right. people overlook it. Yep. And when you start to enter into your fourth gate, which is your uh, heart chakra, which Carlos Consoneda talks about with the Don Juan mm -hmm. and uh, my Don, uh, Don Javier is you start traveling to other people to heal them or going where people are awake on other sides of the planet because it's more entertaining while your body's sleeping, <laughs> your energetic body's going somewhere else. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So that is awesome. Using the subconscious, using dream time is one of the biggest hacks that there is. And anybody Waking can do charged. it. Anybody yeah. can do it. So set the intention when you're going to bed at night to remember your dreams at night. Yeah. To have certain types of things happen the next day. Yeah. Right? You, you're certain types yeah. of people you want to meet. I used to do what was called day scripting. What is that? And you could call it white magic. Okay. Right? So I would write out what I wanted to happen during the day. Okay. The script. Uh, meetings that I had, I would write out who's going to be in the meeting, what are they going to say, what do I want to see in the reality that I am projecting or perceiving, projecting, and receiving. Okay. Right? Yep. So I would write it all out as if it was a movie. And uh -huh. then nine times out of ten, you'd show up in the meeting that you just wrote out. Wow. They would say verbatim what you actually wrote on your script. Wow. So it's just, it's white and you, magic. And you do that in the morning? Yeah. Well, at night. At night. The subconscious was processing exactly. it. Exactly. So the same thing I do for my videos, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So similar. So just day scripting or night scripting or whatever you want to do. It's That's crazy. That's awesome. So important meetings, you can do this. If you're looking to attract the love of your life and you're going on a date, maybe yeah. you write out what you want to have happen That's in That's interesting. Date. That's kind of what Victor did. Victor Odo, yeah. who is with his soulmate, uh, Patty. Love Victor. They, yes. Great guy. He, uh, he, when he was, you know, ready for Patty and ready for a soulmate, he kind of like, uh, he had this moment where he kind of like declared that out to the universe. Yeah. And apparently Patty did the same thing around the same time. That's and then awesome. they met like a week later. Insane. So this stuff really does work. And yeah. I think the power of it is really just becoming in tune yeah. with your own vibration and being aware of the things that may be holding your vibration down. Uh, I'm sure there's times that maybe yeah. you've ate certain foods, you've yeah. done certain activities, been around certain people, and when it drains your energy, you then have less energy to put towards Absolutely. manifestation, right? Yeah, and you feel it. 
If right. There's something's off. There's resistance somewhere. That's how you know you're not in alignment. Right. And there's simple exercises that you can do to bring you right back into alignment. Yes, like meditation. Meditation. Uh, one of the things, I've gotten to a place now to where my whole wakened reality is like a lucid living, like lucid yeah. life. There's lucid dreams and then there's lucid, which is you are awake in life. Yeah. And, this, and you talked about this, but the synchronicities that mm -hmm. happen in your life, the 1111, the 222, all the numbers that you see, all the people that start to show up, yeah. all the gifts that you receive, places, unforeseen situations and circumstances yeah. start knocking on your door because you're in alignment. Right. And that inner world is projecting the outer world. Right. And you're materializing back to you what you really want to manifest. Right. So uh, the big thing is, you know, clearing the trauma like we talked about. Yep. Clearing the trauma. And then going into different strategies to raise your vibration. Yes. Meditation was one. Yep. Uh, water can be a meditation exercise. What do you do for that? So I'm crazy with water. I've seen. Right? Do you put you your see... water in with red light? Yeah. So that's one wow. of the things. Okay. We structure it with the life ionizer. Okay. You've got to get you set up with one of those. Yes. And then uh, you don't need all this fancy biohacking stuff, by the way. Yeah, you just the biggest The biggest thing I do is, and I learned this uh, from a mentor, is every time I drink my water, I am saying thank you, I love you, I appreciate you, thank you for healing my body. And it's just this act of gratitude. If yeah. I'm washing my hands, I'm doing the same thing. The human body is 70 to 80% water. Right. So the energy that you get from doing this simple exercise, blessing your water, is super profound. It'll change your life. It'll raise your vibration. Wow. It'll, you know, the water that you use to water your garden, you're thanking it, you're blessing it, the water wow. from the rain, everywhere you see water, taking a bath. If you have yeah. a lot of negative energy around you or there's somebody that's annoying you, a bath with Epsom salt and some essential oils, yeah. even better yet, rose. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, it's super high vibration, rose, right? And it just cleans all the energy cords wow. off of you. Yeah. So I try to take a bath every day. Wow. That's a vibrational exercise. That's a good idea. Yeah, 20, 30 minutes mm -hmm. sitting in the bathtub, making sure that I'm just clearing my mind, clearing the energy. Anybody can do that as well for the yeah, most part. Yeah, anybody can you take know? a bath. If you have a bathtub, um, and, and it's a little bit of salt. Yeah, and a little bit yeah, of salt. Yeah, and intention. Put your intention into yep. the water. Put your intention and gratitude into the water. Yeah. And that raises the frequency of it. And since your body's 90, yeah. 80, 90% water as well, yeah. it's vice versa. And one thing I learned from Mr. Hicks long mm -hmm. ago that I've applied to my life, which I love, is my favorite walks. Uh -huh. So I walk outside and I would look around and I'd be like, Aaron, you're my favorite Aaron. You yeah. are my favorite person. Yeah. Right? Uh, this this house is my favorite house I've, I've ever it's been. It's my favorite house too. It's, this, a, it's these, a really cool these house. These flowers over here are my absolute favorite. Look yeah. how beautiful those flowers are. Yeah. This palm tree, it's my favorite. This yeah. trampoline, it's my favorite. Yeah. So you're walking around and you're impressing upon your subconscious that everything around you is the best that it has ever been or ever could be in the moment. Wow. It's immediately raising your vibration. That's amazing. And then I do breathing exercises while I do this, while I breathe in. I love my life. It's like an incantation, right? Yeah. Uh, so you think it, breathe it in. Breathe in. I love my life. I love my life. And then life. you say it on and the outwards. I'm saying it out loud. Oh. Because sound creates the I harmony in the body life. that changes the cells in your DNA makeup. So the vibration of I love my life. You can feel I it. I love Put my your hands on your heart. I love my life. That's yeah. changing your body, dude. Wow. Like your DNA is shifting right now. Wow. Through, that's so cool. through the own melody of your voice. So that's another vibrational hack. Amazing. Yeah. You just gave us like a machine gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, brrr. <laughs> that was amazing. So, um, yeah, that was amazing advice from the one and only Drew Canoli, mm. one of my good buddies Thank you, and soul brothers. Yes. He's uh, He's got his channel below. Yes. We'll eventually do a video on your channel one day. I'd love to. Uh, when we have time yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to show you around a little bit. And, We're going to uh, talk beliefs on mine. Let's do that. So let's, Absolutely. We'll, we'll do that before this is out here too so we can link back to that. Let's That'd do that. Cool. Okay. Perfect. So if you haven't already, check out Drew's channel below. You'll yes. see his URL right there. Thank He's you, my awesome, friend. He's doing amazing things in the world. Super high vibration, extraordinarily mm. abundant. If you want to learn how to be abundant and to really have a high vibration and do it in a heart-centered way, check out Drew's channel. It'll raise your vibration. Other yeah. than that, thank you for coming on, brother. Come on, bring it in. Appreciate you. Heart to heart. There heart to is. heart, man. Thank you, love brother. you. And we love you as well. So you guys have a great day. <laughs> See you guys. Much, much love. love. Namaste.